Like tap. I had to make do with what I had to do because somebody didn't make me a fancy green, super tall, authentic gnome hat. I was I was about to. I was going to, but then it was time to film. You did a great job though. I like your your paper hat. Oh, my little owl won't stand up. I have a feeling I'm going to lose it. No, no, it's stuck on your big old ear. I'm so excited about gnomes, Milo. I'm so excited. What? Once again, don't Google gnome oh, jokes. You're like poking me with that. Well, thing. It, <laughs> I'm gonna put my eye out. Don't Google gnomes. Not, not jokes. Oh my gosh. Let me. I'm gonna tell everybody why. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, this is pro this project has been a long time coming. It's one of the very first things that I needle felted. Gnomes and bunnies were like the, and I was even making little gnome ornaments back when I was making ornaments. It was one of the first things, and they are inspired by one of my favorite artists, uh, Dutch artist name. I'm gonna butcher his name because um, that's a hard one. But Rain Ford Vliet, I think, is the way you say it. <laughs> and um, he did the gnome book. A lot of people are familiar with that. But he also has um, a horse book, a dog book, um, farm life, Noah's Ark, tons and tons of inspiring books. And it's a person, so that's just a good tutorial to you know get under your belt because we're going to do fingers and we're going to do clothes. And my friend Lee, Felting Farmer Lady Lee, on Facebook and Etsy, um, gnomes are one of her favorite things, and this is her one of her gnomes that she made. And our friend Pam Alsdorf made this one. So there's so much potential. We're gonna do the the, the sort of traditional gnome um, with the blue tunic and red hat and boots and white beard. Um, if you can find the gnome book, you can learn all about gnomes, their culture, their way of life. <laughs> as, as though, I have to tell you, my research showed me one thing. What? Gnomes aren't real. What? Yeah, no, they are. I, I'm just telling you. Well, I'm going to talk about them as if they are. The, the internet calls them mythical. Real gnomes are about six inches tall without their hat. And so we're going to be true to reality when we make our gnomes. Well, <laughs> once again, Google would be sad for you. It would be. I'm not going to do it. Um, the other cool thing about gnomes is they love animals, and so they work together well with all of our life-size animals, like the birds and the mice and the chipmunks and the owls and um, everything that we do that is just life size. So it's fun to arrange them. Yes, because in real fish. life, gnomes and mice hang out and work together. They do. Yes. They do. And they help hurt animals and, you know, gnomes use the forest animals to communicate and travel. And it's, recipro it's reciprocal. They well, if you were six inches tall, you'd, you'd ride an animal too. <laughs> right. That's the other thing. Yeah, they can ride them. And you'll find all kinds of cool props to put with your gnomes, like wheelbarrows and, you know, baskets and uh, nests and miniature things. Yes. And we should link, if we can, somehow, the stop motion animation with the gnome well, the character. We'll figure that, it out. Okay. Okay. So we've got a gnome supply pack, which I recommend because it's lots of, lots of different textures and colors. Um, this has the wire that you need. It also has leather for a belt. Um, yeah. So this will be this will be fun. You'll need um, you'll need your felting surface and needles. We use the Zuli tool. Um, we don't use. I'm trying to think. You can use tacky wrap. Um, I think we use tacky wrap on the fingers. Tacky wrap or swax just to help the fiber stay on those little fingers. And this would be, I'd say, an intermediate project. Um, I definitely would do another armature project or two before you tackle the gnomes. 
And see, so much, so much. Um, if you want to pimp your gnome, you can add, look on the website for um, the merino pre-felt, which we have in eight, eight colors or nine, I, think, I only have four here. But so we're gonna make, we're gonna make the clothing from the kit with core wool on top coat. But if you get into uh, more gnomes and or other people, the pre-felt is an excellent way to make clothes. Like I, I whipped this hat out on some red pre-felt um, super quick. So um, that is there too. It's gonna launch you into a lot of possibilities because we're gonna do faces, hair, clothing, shoes, you know, fingers, it, then you can take that and run with it. So so the gnome with the pre-felt clothing is more of a gnome boy. Like, what's up, gnome boy? What are you talking about? <laughs> Where are you going with this? Hey, it's a pun. You know, what's up, gnome boy? What's up, gnome boy? Oh, okay. What's that have to do with his clothes? Well, because he has pre-felt clothes, and you said he'd be all pimped oh, out, so man. I thought of gnome boy. <laughs> I get you now. I'm fo I'm with you. Following yes. you. You get that? Yeah. Picking up, put your laying down. Yes. <laughs> Pick it up and go. <laughs> okay. We, we should go. We should, we should go. Start. Let's start. So. So. This is my much loved and used gnome book. Can you see that? Uh, up a tiny bit. And to the left, a tiny bit. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. It explains everything in here. See? They're tools. They're animals. See, writing that, yes. Their relationship with people. How they build things. So, you can learn a lot with this book. It would be good to look through it to be inspired because... And to understand gnomes. Yes, because when you Google it, the first thing that comes up is a gnome is a creature of myth. Mm. How would you like to be called that, Milo? Then it does say they're tiny, shaped like humans with long beards. <laughs> and they like shaped gems. Shaped like humans. <laughs> they like gems and they like mining. Oh, interesting. That's what it said. I wonder if every culture has gnomes or like one of those things or I think it's pretty much an a European um, what would you, yeah Dutch Finland Swedish that whole okay I should pay attention to what I'm doing your kit has so many little things in it it has um, white locks this is belt but what we need first is the wire um, and pipe cleaner. Let's see. This is your core, your main core. Here's all your other cores. Blue top coat, uh, more core, flesh tone, legs, boots. And then you'll have this little poof of um, Angora. And that is to, I like to make their little boots have out of rabbit fur. So that has an Angora blend in it. It's exciting. So move the wool out of the way and concentrate on the armature to start. So you have two, um, Honestly, I can't remember if this is 26 or 32. And without both of them in front of me, it's hard to tell. But you have two wires for hands, and you have two wires for your armature. I believe they're 18 and 22. So open them up without bending them. And we're gonna start with the 18. And we're gonna find the center. And I'm gonna make a loop rather than a sharp fold here. I'm gonna look at my notes here. 
I'm gonna make a loop that's not quite two inches. That's like an inch, like the shape of a fish. Uh, about an inch and three quarters. Look at that. Should get a ruler out. So that's two inches. So that is just shorter, shorter than that. And then I'm gonna do three twists to make a neck. So overall, it should be about two and a half inches. And so this will be our head and neck. Then we're gonna find the center of our second wire. <laughs> Are you looking for the good ruler? This is not the good ruler. I know. The good ruler is with my um, card reader somewhere. <laughs> Okay, so the center of the second wire, this is the same way we make the animal armatures. Um, it doesn't matter if you, you know, front or back, but you're just gonna put that point over the base of the neck. This is gonna become the body and legs, and this is gonna be the arms. And in this armature, I'd like to twist three times instead of two. So this wire is gonna come back to me three times. So that's one, two, three. And that just gives them a broader shoulder. It, it makes sure that that's you know, really well integrated and not gonna wiggle. And you can make this, usually I wrap um, slightly loosely, but you can make this on the tighter side. One, two, three. He doesn't really have a front or back yet, but. That should leave you um, about, I think I said it leaves a six inch arm, but it doesn't really. It leaves about a five and a half inch arm, or a five inch arm. Yeah, about five inches, which should be good. Okay. We're going to leave a triangle for the chest and that's going to be about two inches. So just try to get your um, try to get your wires evenly spaced here. So this one and this one the same length. So if I put this at the base of the neck or just under the neck, I want that cross to be at about two inches. And then we're going to do three twists for a waist like that. So overall, the whole thing isn't more than three inches. So here's the three inch mark. This is not our good ruler, as you can see. No! <laughs> so that's the three inch mark is right there. Okay, now we wanna give them little one inch hips so that his legs aren't coming out of the same socket here. You know, our gnomes are actually gonna end up slightly larger than life size because doo -doo -doo, hip three inches that should leave you about six inches yeah I've got two different lengths but that's okay their legs from the hip so we made a little bend one inch out for the hip their legs from the hip are three inches long so I'm going to fold where the heel would be and you can kind of stand it up make sure you've got got his legs even okay then for the foot we want to have a heel we want to have a little bit of wire back here so you're going to fold it kind of like a paper clip and it's going to be a one inch loop oh this one's a little short i don't know how i did that a one inch loop and then we want a quarter inch heel so I'm just gonna fold that little tip around this this side I have um, I have a little more wire to play with a little more wire to fold around oh my gosh I have no pliers 
it's really good so because you're showing, you're showing people. I'll get it. I can get it. You're showing people how to troubleshoot. How to troubleshoot? Like, oh no, <laughs> my wire's a little short. Should I make a new armature? Nah, nah. You could even um, fix it with pipe cleaner if you needed to. <laughs> Some kind of funk on my on my pliers. I'm gonna say that it's. Tacky wrap. It's tacky wrap. <laughs> or wood butter. All right. So this one, I'm going to fold just the tippy end around, and I might need to expand it with pipe cleaner. Oh my gosh, my fingers are so slippery right now. Your pliers are slippery too. Yeah, it's got it on it. And then this one, I'm actually need to cut a tiny bit off. And fold it around. Do you want something like that? Like so. Now, when, give them nice broad shoulders. When our hands hang down next to our legs, um, our elbow is at our belly button and our wrist is at our hip and our fingers are on our thigh. So with that in mind, um, I'm imagining his elbow right there. I'm imagining his wrist here. And so I want to make a triangle out of this extra wire that will be the palm of the hand. And then the fingers will hang down from that. Um, let me show. So his fingers almost come down to his knees. So if I were to give you um, a length of where we want the wrist to be, I'd say about three inches. So that means I want my palm to hang down from that. So this is a little bit long. So this little bend right here marks three inches. And then I want about a half an inch and a half an inch to make my palm. So I'm gonna trim that. And I'm gonna go in a half an inch and make one fold. And then I'm going to go in a half an inch and make another fold and then flatten this out so that it's easy to wrap my fingers. And that's going to um, make that triangle. I'm going to fold this one. Oh, I should have done it the other way. I'm going to fold it the other way because I'm left-handed and that is going to help me um, There we go. That's gonna help me when I do my um, wrapping to leave this loop open to the out to the left side. If you're right-handed, you probably want to leave the loop open to the right side because I wrap this way, so I can wrap in there. If you're right-handed, you're gonna wrap this way. All right, the other side. Um, I want a three-inch to wrist, so I've got a little extra length to cut off, maybe even a little bit more than that. And then I'm going to fold about a half an inch back, and then about a half an inch back. That. Why, are, why are there no gnome accountants? Um, I don't know why. They always come up a little bit short. <laughs> yeah, that's not the right, uh, not the right profession. Oh, it's a little lopsided. But it's in his shoulders, not his arms. Poor guy needs to see the chiropractor. Now the head, we want to pull into, um, oh, I should have a little piece of paper here. We do it in the, uh, do you have a pencil on you, Milo? Thank you. Um, we want to pull into a skull shape. So instead of having a flat looking from the front um, pancake shape, when I look at it from the side, I'm going to pull the head into um, sort of the top of the head and the jaw. 
So it's going to make this lopsided heart. So I just start to kind of pull it apart and I make one, one side bigger than the other side and then you just turn that towards the front. So this will become his chin and jaw and this will become the back of the head. And that just, it just gives, I found, a better way to start building faces because if you do it the pancake way, they always end up too flat and it's really hard to get that depth to the skull that we actually have, this depth. Okay. Now we wanna put the finger wire on and I should have a digit widget. And, um, you should grab your Zoli tool while you're down there. I should. I bet, I bet you're going to need that. And Perhaps some those. scissors. <laughs> maybe a punch tool. <laughs> Pretending like I don't need stuff. Um, we can make five fingers. It's the right thing to do. I don't know. Do real gnomes have five fingers? They, real gnomes do. See? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Everyone sigh. As excited as I am about this project, I am not no, you're super excited. You're very anti I'm very anti-fingers. Anti if you are smart, you have a really nice piece of tacky wrap, and I have this little nub. <laughs> but look at how it can be used. And then just go ahead and um, pull your wire through it to get it sticky. This is gonna save us from swax. Not that swax is a bad thing, but this is just a little bit easier. Well, you don't have to wait for it to melt. You don't have to wait for it to melt. You don't have to worry about getting it in your hair. That wouldn't happen. <laughs> Who would do such a thing? Who else got it? Someone else got it in their hair, yes. didn't they? Someone out in internet land. Yeah. I got it on my cute shirt. Oh, that bummer. purple shirt. Yeah. Okay. That's tacky. That's tacky for sure. So I'll just start mid-arm. Wrap down the arm. I want to make a thumb first on this side because that's where I am to the inside. I'm going to guess at it. About three quarters of an inch. And then when I get to the palm, let me go ahead and twist that so it doesn't wiggle around on me. I'm going to use the digit widget and I'm going to use the third step and I'm going to make four fingers. One, two, oh, get back up there. Brace yourself. Oh yeah, the dogs are going to bark. The dog, three, four. Then I wrap around the wire here. Then I pinch it together. And this comes back up the arm. Now I can go ahead and slide this off. I want to give each of these fingers a twist. Since this is the pinky, I'm going to give it more twisting to try and make it a little smaller. I mean, you could actually make these different lengths, but um, on this project, I don't get that super duper detailed. So I'm twisting the middle finger and index finger less. And it does, it does make them different lengths. And this can come back up. Make sure you wrap this the same direction. Um, you don't want to crisscross, you want to integrate. So I'll show it again on the other side. This time, 
because I wrapped my arms um, or I folded this wire the same direction on each side, I'm on the pinky side first. So I'm going to go ahead and do my digit widget on step three. Get this stuff out of the way. There we go. One, two, three, four. Now, I need to make a thumb over here before I swing back. Get these started before I lose them. We have whole tutorials on this, so um, my thumb. Now I can close the palm and wrap the wire up. Do we do it in the? What do we make hands in? I mean, we have the very first little hand video that we ever made. Santa, but that's a university. Yeah, we do it on mice. We do it. Chipmunks. Chipmunks, raccoons. raccoons. And then I try to pinch those pretty tight. And I can, I can stick a little more tacky wrap on these as well. You could even just do this. You could just do it after it's wrapped. But I think the tacky wrap helps with the digit widget because it kind of holds it there. So before we get into wool, I want to go ahead and get... Um, his hands look huge, but that's just the way it looks right now. I want to go ahead and get um, the pipe cleaner where it needs to be so the rest of the armature are finished up. So we're going to do one pipe cleaner on each leg. So just start at the waist, come down. Actually, I could probably, if it's long enough, shoot up here, get a little bit of this chest area. Then come down. You could tacky wrap this as well, but uh, when you get to the foot, you're just gonna fold the same thing. Come all the way down to the ankle, fold back over the tip of the toe, and then fold back, just go over the edge of the heel and fold it in. So you're just getting pipe cleaner on there so that the wool sticks easily. And then on this side, I'm going to hit this side of the rib cage. I needed to extend my foot just a little bit. This is going to pop off, but that's okay, because when you put the wool on, it'll hold it there. So I'm just going to let the pipe cleaner stick out a little bit farther than the, um, than the wire is, and that'll make that heel as big as the other heel. There we go. Oh, look, he's standing up. The last pipe cleaner is going to, let's see, we can get a little bit of the shoulder. And then you do the head like you do the foot, like you want to go around the top of the head and then around the chin. It's not pretty. And then let me think. I'm crisscrossing my neck. Why am I crisscrossing? That's okay. And then I'm going to come get this shoulder. And then I can trim it off. Try not.
not to have pokey ends just sticking out in random places. Like you want it to be able to integrate with a joint or something. All right, so now armature is finished and we're ready for wool. That's exciting. Except that the first thing we need to do is the fingers. <laughs> That's not so exciting. Some people do them last because they find that as they work on the rest of the project, um, it can get a little, they can get a little messed up. Mm. But um, I have a hard time building anything up when what's skinny coming off of it isn't done yet. So um, this is a um, core wool in a, what I think is a nice, pretty nice flesh tone that works really well on a little, a little project like this. So we're gonna work with, I would start with about um, a four inch strip, a four inch piece, and then you're really gonna break that down into little strips. So I'm just pulling off very thin pieces and I'll go ahead and um, you know pull apart several while I've got the wool in my hands and then I'll be all ready to make a bunch of fingers. Look at where your pipe cleaner landed. On your toe. Can you see those? Nope. Where am I? Can you see me? Yes. Okay. But I cannot see the strips of wool. Can you now? I could zoom out. <laughs> well, you're going to need to zoom in here in I one know. second. We'll take people for a little ride. See all those strips <laughs> right there. Okay. So I want to wrap in the same direction that I did my wire. And I've got tacky wrap on here. <clears throat> I'm just going to go out and back on each digit. Nice and thin. When you get to the end, you just need to angle back and that will keep it pulled on there. If you just, if you linger there, it's going to want to slip off. So there is some practice involved here, as most of you know. Um, and then I don't want a ton left over, like just enough to anchor it back. But you don't want to keep building up a huge amount on the palm because you want to have control over that. So I'm going to do a couple of fingers and then um, let you work and not do them all on camera. So I'm going to get it started around the palm and then pick a finger and go out. And I'm just making sure I got some tacky wrap on the tip there. And then angle back. Nice light today. Yes, not too bright. And I'm keeping it nice and smooth and tight so that I don't have bumps or lumps or. And if you need to, you can set it down. Take a um a 40 twist and just hit the edges a little bit. What do you think? One more? One more, Milo? I think so. Okay. Well, do you need to show finishing of the palm? I will. Or is it really? Okay. I will. I just have uh, freaking <clears throat> how many more fingers to do? Eight. <laughs> I can count. I really can. Seven and a half now. Seven and a half. Max taught me how to count binary. What? Do you know how to do that? I don't even know what it is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> it, you can count to, I forget what it is, 64 or something on two hands. Wow. Where do you learn that? I don't know. Internet. <laughs> YouTube. My kids surprise me with things that they know. 
Could you imagine growing up with like access to <laughs> information besides encyclopedias? Yes. It's crazy. And I did just give everybody the finger, which was a little bit fun for me. <laughs> no, no one's pretty much doing that right yeah. now, too. All right, wrap your fingers. I got my fingers wrapped and yours aren't. Oh, they are. <laughs> <laughs> We've resorted to taunting people <laughs> to cope. Oh, here's all my little fringy bits. Um, okay, so to finish, so this is just what was left from each finger kind of landing on the palm. It looks really well blended already. But to finish the palm, we want probably more like a six inch, a five or six inch strip. Let's do this. This is a five inch piece. I'm gonna split it in half and then I'm gonna split the half in half. And one of these will do each hand, I think and stretch it out, make it nice and as even as possible. Taking your time to really look at and control the wool is a big part of these little refined um, details because if you have bumps and twists and weirdness, it's, it's gonna show. So now I wanna start about at the elbow, maybe a little lower, come down the arm the wrist. Now to make it more look more like a hand, we want to give the thumb this kind of meaty thumb palm. So that is a matter of going around the thumb. Move up a tiny bit if you And can. returning you to the hand. Then I want to cover the knuckles here to make that nice and smooth. And as I come around, I'll do the thumb palm again. So I'm going around the thumb and returning to the hand. And then I can get rid of the rest of this. Oh, so nice. Hmm. Still need a single needle. Too many little wires. Lots of little wires in there. We make a hand in the in the tacky wrap video, I think. We make a hand. Oh, we make it with the other way, with the single wires in that video. When you're working this small, I feel like this is the better way. All right, we'll do it again on this side. Got to get his hand turned the right way here. Maybe one day down the road, we've done every critter in the world. We'll do a, a she gnome. I don't know why we just make men. But the women are, um, they're fun to make with their like long braids, um, but they, the faces are hard because there's no beard to hide your mistakes. You'll find this this place that you can that it feels natural to come around the thumb here and then return to the palm. And then I want to cover the knuckles. And then I can do the thumb one more time. My information says most European ethnic groups have had some kind of gnome legend with a local variation. Yeah, I believe it. The older wacky Europeans. The older tradition showed them as ugly ground dwelling creatures. Those are trolls. Okay, go ahead. They were Sorry. more akin to small goblins and disfigured fairies and acted more like animals. However, more modern ones show them as Stout humanoids to wear the tall hat, tall hats. It also says they often are shown as having the intelligence of a human or sometimes wiser. Oh, I'm sure they're wiser because they're like all in tune to the animals and everything. He's all hands right now. He's handsy. <laughs> oh.